Golden State Media Concepts Technology Podcast covers everything tech. The hottest mobile phones, tablets, games. We review it, rate it, test it. Whether you're Microsoft or Apple, Android or iPhone, we'll give it to you. Get it, get it. Black and white. The Golden State Media Concepts Technology Podcast. Hello and welcome into the GSMC Technology Podcast. It is a Tuesday and I am Tom Doherty, your host. As always, this podcast is brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network today. After the announcement of the GDPR, which is the data protection uh, regulations that they are releasing over across the across, overseas uh, in the UK, the European Union coming out with these new regulations that is uh, kind of having these ripple effects as we're seeing across the uh, world, actually, across over the, around the whole globe, even here, every time I log into a new social media or a new tech website or whatever it might be, there's a new uh, privacy policy and such that shows their compliance to this uh, new this new lawsuit, this new law, these new laws that are coming in, all these regulations, the GDPR, that uh, which is the General Data Protection Regulation that the European Union has put into place. Uh, it will be it was implemented a couple of days ago, last Friday. So, what does that mean? What does this do for all this? Uh, all these tech companies, I know a lot of tech companies aren't really. They've already had major lawsuits come out. We'll do that. We'll talk about that more probably in the last segment there after we get through um, the stuff regarding Amazon Alexa, which is another scandal coming on, coming out right now regarding the fact that Alexa is, gonna, is listening in on your con- uh, conversations throughout your house. Um, and then also the, some stuff regarding the new iPhones that will be coming out uh, in the in the fall as well um, with some news coming out uh, for the iPhones for next year as well too. So uh, we'll be going over all of that uh, this show here. And... Um, Starting off with the Alexa stuff, I know uh, that um, there's a lot of question marks regarding all the, what is she listening to? I know that I, I kind of understand why she has to listen to stuff. Um, you do prompt her with your voice when she has to be listening at all times to have to listen to Alexa. Whenever you say Alexa to, to start to start prompt to be prompted, but she doesn't have to be recording, but she is recording. And uh, there is there's a, there was a, a new story uh, that was out last week regarding a family in Oregon, I believe, that was having an argument. And their whole argument was recorded on Alexa, and then it was sent via email to their neighbor's house. And their neighbor got an email with an audio file recording of this argument. And so, uh, yeah, there's different way. We'll go over the ways to keep Alexa from uh, from listening to you. But yes, she is she is listening right now. I'm gonna call her she, of course, because I mean, it's kind of awkward that way. But I mean. That's the way it's going on right now. It's the fact that uh, it is listening to your com- uh, conversations. Uh, but it, and I, I bet you uh, uh, some of the smart smart speakers are going to do that too. If that's what we're calling them, smart speakers or these home uh, device, smart home devices, whatever you want to call them, whether it's the Google Home or Alexa or the Apple uh, HomePod or whatever it may be. But it looks like that we're getting, getting more and more reports uh, that uh, these are coming coming out and uh, we're getting coming out that regarding these uh, eavesdro- little eavesdropping issues with Alexa. I know um, they think that think that they hear uh, maybe whether it's being prompted that you hear uh, here's Alexa and then it starts recording after that uh, or it's just always going to be recording no matter what you say uh, that's going to be prompted or not is the question. I know that Amazon wants to come out whoa, whoa, whoa here. We're not trying to eavesdrop on everybody. Uh, we're just, we're just, uh, it's just the uh, function that it's sitting in right now. But uh, you can also go in and see what it has recorded on you. Obviously, there's an app that is connected to the Alexa app, uh, connected to Alexa. So it looks like you're going to just go to the Alexa app. Um, you can go into the settings area of that app and get on history and it'll tell you uh exactly what you've been uh what you've been saying i know that it'll it'll record every type every time you've interacted with alexa uh, and um been telling been telling it to uh to do certain things regarding uh what functions you wanted to do but whether it hurt alexa or not to begin with i know it could be the fact that oh it confused something you said with alexa like you know obviously you just say alexa and it'll it'll start 
like listening to you, um, it could say, it, it was, oh, we, it misheard uh, something else as Alexa and it started recording something completely mundane and had nothing to do with a task that you wanted it to complete. And you can go look that up in your phone and you can also um, delete that as well. So it looks like uh, that they're try- just trying to be a little more transparent with that. I know that these are com- this isn't really coming out from a, from Amazon itself, but there is there are reports out giving you um, different ways in order to go see what it's been listening listening to and another thing as well as um, ways to uh, keep it from eavesdropping you as well. Um, I'm sure you go into those same settings on your phone as well as uh, different ideas as for, it says turning up the volume as well as uh, just kind of keeping it, being maybe enunciating a little more as well when it comes to how how you say Alexa uh, in certain ways, obviously. Um, yeah, set it. I mean, you can also set it to a different word that won't be confused as well as much as uh, as Alexa would be. Apparently, that's the issue we're seeing now is the fact that, like I said, Alexa thinks that you're saying Alexa and it's no, you're not. You're saying something different. Uh, so you could definitely say a, you can set it to have a different word that will uh, prompt it to start listening to you. Uh, another thing, uh, turning up the volume of it, saying um, if you when you do. Uh, Set up your Alexa. You can also turn off the its access to your contacts on your phone. So you could turn off the calling and messaging function as well, um, and you could just turn it off when you're not using it. Obviously, if you just if you're having a party or something, you don't want it to be uh, listening. Uh, you can just turn it off. You can also set it to no no voice purchases. Whether I know that's another thing. I was I've been talking to some people, and I know people who um, you can either password you can password protect your Alexa as well as you can just set it to where you can't order things on Amazon through Alexa with voice purchases. So uh, I've heard of stories of people going into their friends' houses or or whatever it may be, and um, just telling their Alexa to order like. A, a, a big boxes of food or some or cookies or whatever it may be random things that was have sent to their house and all of a sudden these people are just getting hundreds of bo- or I mean a few boxes of of crackers or whatever it may be <laughs> you can order from obviously you can order whatever you pretty much whatever you want off of Amazon um, whether it's food or not but you can uh, you know people have going in and starting I kind of what we call it hacking it's just kind of taking advantage of the fact that it's sitting there and you're like hey Alexa order this this and this and have it sent to me. Like, if it, your credit card is linked to your Amazon account and your Alexa is linked to your Prime account, then boom, it's going to happen, and you're going to get you're going to get an order that you didn't really think of. So you can change that, changing it, uh, saying no to voice purchases as well. Uh, you can change the function that um, it's going to be. It's called the drop in function. So you can turn off your drop in function, and it will um, it will allow, it will basically. Uh, it doesn't give warning when somebody's trying to drop in. You can decline the visit. So whether it's um, you can just set the drop in drop in feature off and or just have it to contacts only, and your uh, and your Alexa app when you go to the communications communication settings on your on your in your Alexa app as well. And um, yeah, so there's these are these aren't really ways or just like stop listening, Alexa. Like my, I know my family has one of these, and I was visiting, and it's over there. It's like. Oh, we're just going to tell Alexa. I'm like, I don't think it really works that way. You can't just tell Alexa to stop listening. You got to go in and actually do something to it. I know uh, Amazon was all excited when it's like, oh, you can, uh, you can, you don't have to have a coding degree. You can just, you can just set Alexa to do whatever you want. You can have all these preferences and stuff, and have it re- react to different jokes and, and and have different jokes for different people. Have them assigned to different people, different routines and stuff. And now it's like, oh, by the way, it's actually listening to everything you're saying. It might confuse the fact that you said Alexa and start listening to what you're saying and have this whole conversation recorded and you can go look back on what you've been talking about in your history. So it's a, it's a, it's kind of interesting how that's now coming out and we're seeing more and more news stories. I mean, go watch a lot of your local news or some of it's made to a national cycle, but mostly no, local news reporting on the fact that, uh, Alexa is recording some weird details about your life and and it might be uh, sending it to your sending them over to your neighbors so i mean uh, it can be creepy uh for sure because the fact that um you can go on your phone and actually see 
I see that there's a recording of what you're saying. I know that sometimes they have text text uh, available, like it'll actually transcode what you're saying, or it'll you can just actually pre- play and listen back listen back to a conversation that it had either accidentally quote unquote accidentally accidentally recorded uh or it, that it did because you were just saying it, you were messing with your i know there's times where i just we can just mess with the alexa app and just start think thinking that you're asking a bunch of questions and then all of a sudden that's recording an entire conversation that you're talking about uh when you're talking about alexa but yeah no it's definitely creepy uh obviously when you when you purchase something like this and you have uh you're an owner of a of a, of a smart device like this you are entering into a, you, know, you can say you take responsibility as an owner. You have a certain um, knowledge that you are doing, uh, are working with something like this technology that my may has obviously has a listening device on it, uh, a microphone that if you think that maybe just be list, looking doing it for your best uh, interest, but uh, maybe not. I think it's the. The fact that you only have to say one word is the Alexa thing, and what you know, obviously we say Alexa. So I think that, like I said, that one of those options in order to keep it from listening is changing that wake word. So I think you can change it to two, changing it maybe to two or three words in succession is harder to, you know, obviously harder to mistake that and start recording for no reason. I think I've even heard. Uh, I know sometimes when you say like "Hey Siri" uh, or. Like, okay, okay, I just said, say, hey, Siri, and it just turned on my phone uh, and it started to uh, listen to me. But if you say Sirius, sometimes it'll work too. But like, uh, you can change change that to uh, something different. And same thing with Alexa, uh, you can change it to something different versus, uh, like, you know, the Google has the hey, Google, or whatever it may be. So you can change your, um, your wake word to something else. Uh, might be a little helpful for you. But look, I know there's a lot of different things. I know it's for uh, Amazon will say it's for quality assurance. You can go back and look at that. Uh, you can I tell you they're going to get feedback from Alexa. It's like a, if you go back and look at the in the Amazon Alexa app, which I need to think. I'm going to see if I have that on my phone for the one at, at home. I have the Amazon Alexa app right here. Um, but uh, you can go back and look at the history let's see i think it might be they're thinking it's probably for <laughs> i think it's probably for quality assurance maybe it's it's it'll say did alexa do what you wanted it to do all right hold on we're looking at the let's go look at this history on my device let's see if it actually has let's look at that drop-ins on and you turn that off probably hmm it says history but I don't, i'm not seeing history on here so you can change the wakeboard. That's really it's really uh, really easy. Looks like you just go in on click your click the div- different devices um, for that. Oh, there it is, history. Yeah. See now it says text not available. Alexa. See you could I could see where we try to turn Alexa off. Um, <laughs> this is actually pretty funny, listening to what it says. But uh, yeah, it's 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 it, it looks like it's. Um, Recording some things, but uh, I mean, you can even say you can even tell some things are not uh, weren't prompted from just Alexa. I know it's just it's uh, I can see where my dad is trying to play some music, but it's weird. Some of the things weren't actually prompted by the Alexa name. It was just one we're just saying something. So maybe it might be like I said, we, might, we could be recording at all times, but uh, most of it was uh, prompted by an Alexa. But yeah, you can. Um, yeah, there's lots of. I mean, there's lots of. Go look. I advise you to go look at your Alexa app. I know some people buy these things and just plug them in, and you start using them. You you sync it to your app like you're supposed to. Like how that's how you set it up, obviously. But I advise you go look at the Alexa app. There's lots of different things on here that's going to um, uh, probably answer a lot of questions uh, regarding your uh, Alexa, uh, your Amazon Echoes, whether you have the dot or the tower or whatever. And um, go look at the Alexa app, and it's actually pretty interesting how you can. Um, how you can connect it and look at some of this history regarding it. And obviously change, like I said, change that changing those wake words. Um, you can always do the skills and the routines and stuff like that. We talked about that on the show a bunch, but, uh, going and changing those wake words, uh, turning off the drop in stuff, um, and, uh, what have you and going and, uh, making, making these things a little less, uh, maybe human <laughs> where it's just listening to you and more of a, uh, assistant device versus a, a something that it could be eavesdropping on your conversations. So that's what we got to do, uh, with your Alexas. I, I said, go look at those Alexa apps. Like I said, you can go into your, uh, 
contacts. You can turn off certain things. It uh, even has the things to try uh, c- scenario. I bet you now with this new um, these new pol- privacy acts that are coming out, uh, even overseas, they're, they're going to be changing it a lot for uh, even over here. So uh, be uh, be aware of that and be on the lookout for uh, some more literature that will come out. Some more of these. Um, uh, reviews or what have you. Maybe even Amazon will come out. Amazon will come out with a press release regarding things to uh, troubleshoot your issues, as they're having already some lawsuits come their way. So uh, we're, that'll wrap up this segment. As we will um, come back uh, after the break with some talk on the new iPhones and uh, some changes we might be seeing to the iPhones this year and next year. So stay tuned for that. We'll be right back. you want to be healthier, yet you just don't know what to do. All these shows telling you this and that, but nothing seems to work. Well, listen close. Golden State Media Concepts has got something great for you. The health and wellness podcast dedicated to workout trends, healthy eating habits, diet, and everything about healthy living. Join us in our banters as we help you not just live life to the fullest, but live it to the healthiest. Ooh, welcome back to ESMC Technology Podcast segment number two as we are going to do some talk on the iPhone and what to expect come this fall. I know that Apple will be coming out with a cheaper version, smaller version of the of a new iPhone that is going to be having these LED screens or LCD screens. Uh, I know also the more expensive ones will have these OLED screens uh, with the new iPhone 10 Plus. Uh, and then even next year, we're going to be having... The, all the new iPhones will be coming out with uh, the OLED screen. As I mean, price po- it's, it's a combination of price point and, you know, newest tech. Obviously, you don't want to pinhole people into... I think Apple's finally getting into this, uh, this uh, realm, this kind of mindset where they're not trying to pinhole people into spending all this money on a new phone. That they, they, they lowered the cost of... They made. I mean, they announced a more aff- affordable iPad. They're announcing a more affordable iPhone. I think people are trying to. We're getting to this point now here where everything's all teched up to the nines, and I think people are trying to get a little a little overwhelmed by that stuff. So we're kind of trying to dial it back a tiny bit and um, make it more. Just go for more affordability um, than having to come out with the next big thing. I know that obviously last year with the iPhone 10, there was some major advancements. They got getting rid of the the Touch ID. Uh, getting rid of the whole home button in itself and adding in the face ID and having a full top to bottom screen kind of thing with just that notch. I know the notch was a big deal. And you even saw that kind of reiterated in the fact that all of these Android phones pretty much copied it and threw the uh, created a notch on their phones as well. But with the whole face ID generation now, um, we're going to get into the fact where I think most of these phones are going to be without a home button i know they're going to be they are going to be releasing a smaller like i know the a smaller phone whether it's the iphone 8 or something similar to uh what we saw with the se uh where it's kind of going back to that small uh the 4s size or whatever size that was um the more boxy versus the more rounded edges that we're used to seeing now with these uh skinnier phones but uh, in in this in this new market it is definitely a chance to Increase the options, basically. Create more options for people. And don't keyhole them and do uh, having to... Well, I mean, you're not going to keyhole anybody. People are pretty much going to buy what they want to buy. But uh, as far as the iPhones are concerned, uh, there's definitely going to be uh, some changes coming up in the next couple of years uh, regarding the uh, new... You know, just the options you're going to have. Uh, with the screens and and price points and such uh, versus versus having to uh, or you could be even getting uh, something even better. Obviously, you can always spend the thousand dollars or whatever it is for the iPhone, uh, the new iPhones. But uh, looks like that, like I said, next year, twenty nineteen will be the year every phone will be getting this OLED screen. Uh, the iPhone ten that came out last year was the first phone that's going to be uh, that had the OLED screen. Obviously, it is at a certain price point where I mean to be expected, but um, 
as far as these uh, the new phones, it's going to be a phone next this year with the LCD uh, that's going to be a little cheaper, and then uh, next year will be everything will have that OLED screen, uh, which is going to be kind of revolutionizing this. We're seeing and see it from all these new phones. Uh, whether it's going to be increasing the ability for the wireless charging, I know that the obviously we saw with last year the changes to the iPhone 10 were the fact that they got rid of the aluminum back uh, backing to the phone and added glass a glass backing that made it compatible for already already compatible for wireless charging. So we'll probably be seeing that with uh, most of the new phones coming out this year as well. Uh, Apple seeming, seemingly will be is leading the way as well uh, with all this stuff as they are going to be. Uh, I mean, we've already been seeing kind of copycats. They're leading the way in, in all these new functions. As now we'll even seeing reports that came out today, uh, the fact that Apple could be looking into ways to get a screen that will wrap around uh, the sides of the phone and looking at wrap around sprays and touch and uh, sensitive uh, bezels uh, for the next iPhone. It's obviously um, the newest. You got to come. Out. There's, there's always got to be change. I think uh, we're. I'm seeing other articles regarding how they're going to change the uh, how they're going to change it, where the notch and taking away the notch, but you're still going to have to have an area to put the front facing camera for the face ID as well as the uh, brightness sensors. And um, well, there's another sense that, you know, turns off the screen when it's close to your face and everything like that, as well as the speaker, because it is a phone <laughs> still. And then you need to be able to hear out of the top of it when you're talking to somebody. Um, but it looks like that with the LED phones on the new ones, they're going to be looking at these uh, wraparound displays as well as um, sensitive control, touch sensitive uh, controls instead of having to actually have tactile buttons like we have now regarding when it comes to you know turning off the phone. I think I think that's the one of the bigger things also with the phone whether they're going to keep this uh, lock button and the and these the microphone buttons on the sides with these big with the actual buttons on them or they're going to be changing them to more of a touch you know kind of a touch button to turn it off and off, on and off your phone or change the toggle the volume for you but. Uh, that's all kind of now in the R and D is Apple is looking at this. Obviously uh, they did patent uh, a, a something with the U S U S patent office uh, back in uh, 2016 regarding this, uh, the a flexible uh, more grounded panel that is going to, and a housing that will be, would support a wraparound function of, uh, of having all start, all, you know, a screen that goes around the sides of the phone as well. So uh, they will, they do have the, the, the ability to do it as well as the, uh, the, legal a legal a pro a property available uh, for them to do that as well uh, going back really quick I did want to I did kind of get lost on the fact that uh, with this whole Amazon Alexa stuff I did want to report the fact that there is um, an LG phone an LG TV now uh, going back to Alexa really quick uh, that will be compatible with Alexa as uh, the LG's uh, 2018 TVs will now be working with Alexa as well uh, obviously smart TVs really meant just meant Internet connectivity, connectability, obviously, um, you could pretty much turn any TV into a smart TV these days with the Amazon Fire Stick or a or a uh, Google. What is it? I mean, not Google. Yeah, you can do Google Google Chrome Stick as well. Uh, there's also the um, Apple Home devices as well. So uh, Apple TV, the Apple TV as well to make that work. But now it's all gonna be built in. You're gonna have Alexa built into your TV. So hopefully yeah, another reason for you guys go look at your uh, Amazon Alexa apps and uh, maybe adjust some things to where she doesn't listen to everything or you have a different wake word. I think it's really the key. The key is changing that wake word. Um, so I mean, whether because uh, Alexa, she probably wants she they probably have it set to where it doesn't need to hear the whole thing where it'll pick up fragments of words and think it's so you think that you're saying Alexa when you're really not. And uh, so I mean, whether it's a issue with uh, the listening abilities of it or it's just too sensitive, go and change that wake word for Alexa. And especially if you're going to get the, one of these LG TVs, it's going to be built in uh, as you're going to have the Amazon um, compatibility with the Echo, Echo, Echo Show and the Echo Plus um, as you're going to be able to, you can tell Alexa to toggle channels, volume, browse content. Um, you can do private YouTube streams, all these other things as all through the power of uh, talking to your voice as well. So, um, looks like that these LG TVs, obviously you can always, always use them with the Google assistant as they already are available with that. Um, 
they can now take it as a okay. We we did report I think a couple weeks ago. We talked about uh, the fact that Amazon or Google Assistant is uh, available with uh, multiple <laughs> times. I mean, multiple meaning five thousand different devices uh, that you can use the Google Assistant with uh, to use your voice in order. I mean, I can't wait till these smart these uh, smart uh, displays come out with when you have basically it's going to be like it's going to look like a Google Home. Like you know, you know, those iHomes used to have the kind of longer rectangular ones, but there's a more horizontal display uh, with the speakers on the out, on the outsides, and then a little screen in the middle. So actually, your Alexa will now have a face. Your Google Assistant uh, will now have a face for it to kind of interact with you with, and it'll be able to show you different things on this screen. That'll be uh, pretty interesting as well as the fact that it has the ability to talk to you or listen to your deepest, darkest secrets, whatever it may be. Again, go look at, go look at your settings on Alexa. Uh, all right. Going back to the iPhone stuff. I know that the uh, phones every September we come out, um, with these phones and, uh, whether we're going to be having some updates to Siri. I know I did talk about that, talk about that last week with Siri and the changes that will be had to, um, that will be made to its, uh, avail, uh, functions and the increase in AI. I know that, with the Google Duplex and uh, the fact that I know we already and Microsoft has now come out with the the news that they have had a ability to make these phone calls to other places, you know, have an AI kind of control everything for you, or not everything, but make phone calls and create uh, appointments and uh, make reservations for you. I could do that, but now Google Duplex kind of showed it off a little bit at the uh, uh, Google I/O uh, last two weeks ago, wasn't that? Um, Microsoft had come out and said, "Oh yeah, we already have an AI." I just saw a Microsoft AI commercial, first time ever. I just come out with that randomly. And then, of course, last week we talked about how Siri will likely get some additions to uh, her capabilities. I say her again. Um, capabilities regarding this uh, AI stuff and different uh, functions that she will now have for you readily available on the next iOS update that will be coming out as well uh, with the phones back down in September. All right. We're going to talk about this uh, GDPR, the the General Data Protection Regulation, in the next segment, just to kind of give you guys a run through on that. So I do want to take the last few minutes of this segment to continue, uh, keep talking about Apple and uh, how it will be making some changes coming up this uh, this uh, at the end of this year. Obviously, um, like I said, they're changing their changing a little bit when it comes to the fact that you're making things more affordable. They're trying to uh, also adjust and uh, make changes obviously saying that they are kind of the forefront in the technology now with the updates so we have all these other phones and the one plus phone has the uh, oled coming out as well uh, but they're being they're kind of the first ones we got to figure out how to mass produce these things and uh, make them make them affordable as well as we don't we, we don't want to come out with the first 1500 dollars phone uh, or 1200 phone or whatever it may be um the thing is with phones is that you're also connecting it with a certain carrier. So I think everything now with these phones is, uh, is the fact that, uh, you can pay it off over a certain month or whatever. It's through your carrier, through Verizon or AT&T or whatever you have. Um, which is pretty much, it seems like now it's the only two is are we waiting on sprint and T-Mobile to merge where they're still waiting on, the on the, uh, Disney on the other thing to happen too. So on the, at and and Time, Time Warner Cable is, caught, is tied up in court. They're waiting for that to happen. So uh, quickly, as this comes, it just came across um, the the real reporter reporting toggle thing here. Uh, the Samsung Galaxy uh, Note Nine will is now being it's been hipped or leaked or whatever you want to say uh, that it's going to have eight gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. I mean, these are these big, big phones. <laughs> Obviously they're rivaling the iPhone uh, plus uh, phone uh, line as this is the Samsung galaxy note nine. As this is kind of a, whether it's, this is true or not. Um, this has been, this is kind of a leak as it, uh, it will um, be eight. That's almost like a laptop. Eight gigs of RAM. I think my laptop. I think my my Apple uh, a MacBook Air had eight gigs of RAM on it, <laughs> and five hundred and twelve gigabytes of storage of native storage. Um, I mean the 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 thing the largest. I think the largest iPhone right now was like one hundred and twenty eight, one hundred and sixty four gigs. Now five twelve. <laughs> this is gonna be like a, it's basically like having a tablet as your phone, basically, as these um, Galaxy Note nines, as uh, they'll be coming out. Obviously the S ten 
will be coming out as well. Uh, the launch dates as well as these, uh, we're seeing possibly the uh, Note 9 a month earlier, uh, as early as August for the Note 9, uh, with their, and then the, uh, as well as the Samsung Galaxy S10 coming uh, a month later as that. So we already saw the uh, announcement with uh, how they're going to be doing certain things on the new phone. I've seen also a in display fingerprint sensor. Whether it's, yes, that's the thing we're going to see changes how they're going to meld different functions into the screen. Uh, obviously, they're going to have to do that when they get rid of this notch in a couple of years with the iPhone as well. But it looks like Samsung is also messing with an idea where they're going to be putting a fingerprint sensor actually in the screen versus having a separate uh, toggle, for, a te- like a separate button for it underneath. All right. Well, that'll wrap it up with our smartphone segment here. We did a little bit of talk on. Uh, I know did kind of throwing a little Amazon thing in there as well. But with iPhones, uh, the news on the Samsung Galaxy S9 Note, that uh, Note 9 that will be coming out in August, looks like this S10 will be coming out in the month after that, which is around the same time the iPhones come out as well. So uh, uh, Galaxy S9 did score better than iPhone 10, apparently, in the rankings. But uh, iPhone 10 was still the best-selling iPhone, was still best-selling smartphone on the market. But We'll be seeing how the next line of these guys come out at the end of this uh, year as well. So we'll come back with some talk on the GDPR before we go to the last segment and just kind of bounce around different news. I think I'm going to go into some stuff uh, with some gaming stuff. I know PS4 uh, is in the news uh, still right now, as well as some stuff on Fortnite. So we'll do that when we come back. So stay tuned. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Oh, welcome back to ESMC Technology Podcast as we are going to do some talk on the new general data protection regulation that was put into effect last Friday uh, by the European Union that has some sweeping uh, chain, sweeping effects here in the United States as well. We're already seeing some companies get involved with uh, lawsuits. I think that these tech companies are like, oh, we're no big deal. We're just a, uh, it's just a combined. I think it's, I think I saw something like five point four billion euros already um, that uh, we're seeing with this uh, these lawsuits. But uh, oh, no big deal, no big, no problem. Uh, but as far as what it's going to be doing, uh, the regulation on the this is going to be for European U- Union law. But it, it, we've already seen tons of privacy policies and uh, changes to terms and service of whatever uh, s- social media thing you're going to go be going on to Twitter is kind of having a bunch of stuff. It's all it's saying Twitter. I think Twitter's not- notification thing was like, Oh, it's all in your hands now. Like, you know, it's, it's all you guys. Uh, but yeah, we'll see about that. We'll see how much uh, control you how much pushback we're going to see from these tech companies uh, regarding this, uh, this change. Uh, with these ones, obviously the ones that are multinational, are the ones that are going to have some a bunch of is- uh, the most uh, issues and uh, such because of the fact that uh, they're going to be having to make changes not only in the UK but also over here uh, just to make everything uniform. Uh, as we're going to want to see that. Uh, but regarding what it's, the actual does, it's going to be a regulation. It's going to be da- it's a data protection and privacy for all individuals in the European Union. And uh, in the European uh, economic area, it will also um, address how the export extradition of personal data outside of that area will be managed as well as it's going to be controlling um, different things and giving more control back to the citizens and residents over their personal data, basically making these companies create uh, more of a trans uh, transparent feed 
of information uh, regarding uh, the their their informa- their stuff and their their data. Basically, it's like, oh, we're going to do this to your data. We're going to do this to your data. Uh, no, uh, we want to. Uh, be just more forth with and i know that tech people are probably like uh but the pr people who are who are think who think that this is going to be an issue they're probably you'd be surprised to know that they're going to be okay with it it is actually a little bit better of a i mean it's kind of forcing these companies to be more forth with and it's going to be forcing them to be more be more transparent and with what they're doing obviously they're, they don't want to because that's how they'll make a lot of their money is through our data and selling our data or transferring it every whatever way they need to do it in order to um to help them with the advertisers or whatever their main revenue service is. But these, uh, the PR people, public relations people are, po- are more okay with it than you think because of the fact that, uh, it's a little bit better of an image for these companies, especially for Facebook or something like that. That's had this major, major privacy issue. Um, it's like, okay, yeah, now we're already seeing that there's reactions to this, uh, this scandal that happened in that there's some law, it, uh, legislature being put in, put into play. Not quite over here yet in the United States, but definitely um, overseas. And uh, whether it's PR, putting the PR, uh, putting public relations in GDPR uh, is going to be a pretty easy. Obviously, it's going to be only a good thing because it, it's it's basically requiring these companies to do to do good uh, by their by their uh, and customers and and users because they have to. <laughs> it's uh, in law, uh, obviously. It's going to create uh, better images, create better uh, different ways to put when you're putting out different campaigns and such. Like, oh, by the way, we have to by law be, uh, we're not going to be. I mean, it is kind of a weird way to put it. Obviously, for PR people, it's like, uh, yeah, now I don't have to convince my boss to be more of a, be more PC or be more uh, transparent about certain things. We're not going to be sneaky anymore. We're going to be, it's going to be all out in the open. And uh, this is kind of forcing our hand on it as far as it goes. Um, you know, there's definitely some PR people who are like, no, finally, we're getting into this where it took a, it took an active uh, multinational Congress international Congress in order or a parliament, whatever you want to, I know it's EU as a parliament in order to get this uh, changed. But, uh, as far as they're def- they're like, okay, finally, we're going to actually be able to do our jobs a little bit easier now. Um, I know that uh, different information is going to be probably under a little more scrutiny. It's going to be a little more interesting how journalism and public- uh, publicists put out certain things, uh, whether it's going to be transparency is going to be pa- basically put across the board now, or uh, these companies will find a different way, a new and different way uh, to uh, hide their deepest, darkest secrets uh, from their users. Uh, I don't think it's going to be that bad, but it's not, we're not doing some bond villain stuff here. It's just, it's just selling, it's just selling phones and, and uh, different tech gear and making the social media better. But as far as uh, these, uh, I know these, a lot of these PR people are going to be happy because it's a definitely uh, raising the bar uh, for a lot of these companies the base bar basically we're raising the floor as low as they can go is now not as low as they can go it's it's, it's we're raising it a little bit more as we're going to the jump off point uh, you always can do better obviously um but the jump off point is a little bit higher now uh than it was because of these uh, regulations put in place by the european union um now every pr obviously uh every pr person works a little differently it's probably a little bit different uh a reaction to this, but mostly people are okay with it because it, it does uh, it does make things a little more easier for them. They don't have to do as much cleanup probably because of the fact that this is going to be stopping the issue to, at its at its outset. Uh, but when it comes to these companies, obviously they're not really that worried about it. As I mean, we've already seen Facebook, people were like, "Oh, we're going to boycott Facebook. Everything's we're not we're not we're not going to let Facebook get in, get in our way, or we're not going to let Facebook bully us around." People still use it. It's not really going to be ha- and nobody. They aren't going to have an issue. I know Uber. Uber just had this had a big sweeping um, PR campaign regarding how they're going to be changed in their how their drivers. Uh, I know they've had different scandals regarding drivers and sexual assaults, different stuff like that. They they got through it. They got through that. Uh, they changed a bunch of stuff on their policies and had a commercial about it. Facebook had a commercial about it. Wells Fargo had a commercial about their transgressions and their mess ups that happened a couple uh, within the last couple of years. So basically just create a PR commercial and uh, now it's going to be even easier as uh, hopefully this, this actually will 
stop things in their tracks and stop uh, these scandals from happening in the begin to begin with. Uh, but it's going to be all keeping things out in the open for people uh, to know when their uh, data is being used. Obviously, it is putting the user in more control of their data and having to give uh, permissions to certain companies in order to use their information to, uh, you know, because everything is, everything is, we want raw data. Like we talked about, we talked about a lot. We talked about data a lot kind of as a vehicle to create a uh, different AI advancements to create money uh, making opportunities for these big companies as that's kind of hold the whole point obviously with the scandal we saw with facebook this data w- was being used to influence an election there's a lot of money in that uh there's data that's being used to influence advertisers and influence retail and influence what people are going to buy um it's all kind of you know that's why we see these google powered ads you go search a you go search you go on uh you go on uh, whatever foodnetwork.com and start looking up some different uh, recipes. Sooner or later, you're going to see a ad from Safeway for a pasta sauce or something, or you're going to go, you go to nike.com to go look at some new uh, shorts or whatever. You're going to all of a sudden after the next, on the next site you go on, you're going to see an ad for Nike. Uh, you're going to see, you're going to Amazon. You go look at something you want to buy on Amazon. Next site you go on, it's going to be a little ad on the court in the side for Amazon. Cause it's all, it's all powered through the data, the cookies that you have in your in your computer. As now, it's going to be more. Obviously, we're seeing with these new terms and services, people are going to be more uh, forth with and like, oh yeah, by the way, we're using your stuff in order to uh, in order to try and target what we're what we're, what we're going to sell you. Basically, um, I did want to go in on what's what these uh, these we're already seeing with these uh, lawsuits coming out against these companies i know it's yeah we're already at 8.8 billion dollars for facebook and google in one day of lawsuits i know it's a it's 3.9 billion euros and 3.7 billion euros for google uh 3.9 for facebook but they're not really upset with it i guess uh, so there's new they've already come out with new policies and products to co- to comply with the uh gdpr but uh, apparently not enough as uh does not go far enough obviously with these lawsuits we're already seeing come out uh, a, a quote from Google uh, says, "We build privacy and security into our products, and are very from the very earliest stage, and are committed to complying with the EU GDPR." Obviously, as uh, Facebook has come out with the same thing, saying that they had prepared for the last eighteen months to make sure that they require. Obviously, this was much uh, this this uh, stuff didn't come out of nowhere. It's been in plans for a while uh, over there with the European Union Parliament. But so Facebook is saying that they have. Uh, Put their pl- put their plans in order that they have been doing for the last eighteen months, apparently. But uh, as we've already seen, that um, a, another suit was a fourth suit for Google was filed against um, its operating system, the Android, uh, the Android P operating system already, as well as uh, we're seeing against Facebook, as well as against Instagram and WhatsApp, which are both Facebook subsidiaries. Um, lawsuits going against them. So yeah, it's already adding up to a bunch of money, and we'll see. We'll see how those they all come out uh, with as those will likely be either settled or go to court or uh, whatever. That's a lot of money, obviously, for Google there. But we're already seeing reports that they don't really care and are kind of saying, "Oh, it's kind of a kind of a I don't want to say uh, uh, territorial or or comes comes with the territory kind of thing." Or occupational hazard, whatever you want to, say, whatever cliche you want to say, but uh, as far as this stuff, uh, we're going to be seeing a bunch of different for- enforcement come out, and maybe even more money racked up with these lawsuits. And we're already seeing one day. I said eight point eight billion dollars. Um, I know uh, this was an Austrian privacy activist, Max Schrems, uh that was uh, one to to file a bunch of these lawsuits as well. Uh, so against Facebook and Google. All right. As we come to the end of this third segment here, we're going to come back in just a few moments and uh, talk about a little more with its GDPR. I know Apple has some uh, uh, some stuff coming out as well with the new uh, HomePod 2.0. Uh, we're seeing some more uh, reports out as well with uh, the newest uh, and newest and brightest and greatest technologies to come out on these on our markets as well as uh, some stuff with the. Uh, Fortnite and PlayStation as well. So we'll be coming out and talking about that in the next segment. So stay tuned and we will be right back for that.
Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to GSMC Technology Podcast. Final segment of the day today on the Tuesday I have been your host, Tom Doherty, as we're going to get into some stuff, uh, just bouncing around the tech world here as we're going to do some updates and news regarding uh, the PlayStation and uh, also with some Fortnite stuff as well that I want to get into. I know PlayStation has come out with a, as a third kind of, they, I know we talked about last week, they come out with the news regarding uh, the lifespan of the PlayStation 4 and how much longer they're going to be letting it go before they decide to come out with the next um, the next console, whether it's going to be a more of a VR console or they're going to go for more of the TV stuff. Uh, it remains to be seen, but as far as now, they're going to be coming out with a uh, annual sale as they usually do. Um, it's going to be coming out with a limited edition of Blue PS4s as well as uh, games uh, coming out with that as well. So it looks like they're just trying to. That's the thing. You got to give credit to these gaming cons, gaming companies that come out with a console that's. They can always update the console, tweak it a little bit, whether it's the, the in that in within the generation. Um, but I think that the whole point of it is to sell and sell the more units, obviously. Uh, so if they could just change the color of it and sell, hey, we're gonna put some, we're gonna put some blue paint on it and sell you a blue controller too, and then hey, you'll get some games too. So it looks like uh, the with the game deals as well, God of War is gonna be fifty bucks, uh, Gran Turismo Sport twenty bucks, Zero Dawn twenty bucks, it'll be the show eighteen forty bucks, which is 60, 20 bucks off of uh, the off of base price. So. Um, more stuff. I mean, Child Classes, Farpoint, Impatient, Bravo Team, all those are all the VR ones that are going to be 30, 15, and 15. Looks like. Um, I think that the, the whole point here is to uh, not only to sell to sell these consoles, but to keep the just keep the hype going a little bit as well as uh, um, put, put a new product out there, obviously. Uh, the whole point here is to make make more money for your shareholders obviously but it is to create the best gaming experience uh that uh you can do as well with these uh with these sony devices um uh, when it comes to some more games obviously fortnite's still a big one uh still getting more stuff regarding the uh the fact that it, oh it's a, just a copycat of p bug or P i say it was p bug it's pug b pug g players on the battlegrounds um Regarding this this uh, this uh, stuff with for, with with Fortnite, uh, they're we're, they're doubling down and saying it's still not a clone of uh, player, player unknown, unknown battlegrounds. Obviously, I think it just has more uh, life to it with with Fortnite. All the fact that you're you're getting a lot more interaction on social media. Um, we're seeing a lot more of these review, a lot more of these updates and releases of new uh, capabilities, keeping it more fresh. And obviously these changes, the whole point, we had a, a, a picture of a comet on a little like board during last uh, season. Uh, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? Oh my gosh, what's gonna we didn't see that hype for, for player unknown battlegrounds. It's still a big game, obviously, but with the whole battle Royale concept of it, uh, when you come into the island, and it's just like, well, where am I going to land? What's going to happen? Oh, what's the change? What's this big crater? What's going to be going on? Uh, it's just definitely going to be uh, it's different. I think that the fact that uh, we've they've already had a lot of issues with the copywriting part, part of it, I think that, that it's a definitely different enough um, to, uh, to, to do it. But I think that uh, <laughs> the fact that you have... Uh, all these options uh, for for Fortnite and all these different things you can do with the game. I just it's not a clone. It, can, it has to be, it's too different. It's just too different. Yes, the game the role playing is the same, but you can say the same thing. Okay, okay. That, does that mean Halo? 
uh, Call of Duty. Call of Duty was a clone of Halo because they're both for, they're both first person shooters. No, they're different games. Um, this game, they're both I mean, obviously players on the battlegrounds is the same kind of thing where you, it's free to play online versus you, you go on and you have to buy this is download online. Um, and uh, different things, obviously the fact that Epic games usually, um, or was able to kind of pivot this game off and use its different, use its own engine, use its own uh, ability, um, to, uh, to create its, to have its own itself, whether it's all these, cause it's a lot more stuff going on. It's licenses and ways the game is, uh, based off of what, what code you use to, to start the game originally, obviously all this base stuff. So it looks like that, uh, obviously the P uh, pug G I say pug pub G basically is, uh, built on this, um, engine that it licensed from Epic, um, which is, uh, the fact that it's accusing it is quite interesting. Obviously it's licensed. The fact that parts on battlegrounds licenses, it's engine from Epic, which is the company that created and runs uh Fortnite. is interesting to say, Oh, we we're licensing this thing from you, but then you're using it too. So we're going to sue you for copyright infringement. Mm, I don't know about that. That doesn't really seem very, uh, clear there. Uh, but the fact that, uh, that, um, the fact that it doesn't really have a case here. Yeah. We're seeing that or all these different, all these different releases and, uh, updates here from whether it's, uh, I know that there's a big article out from Forbes right now, uh, that, that is calling, calling, uh, players on the battlegrounds out on itself saying, Hey, um, you know, you're a different game, right? Like it's not, it's not the same thing. And, uh, now that we're, it's already taking it to court and everything as uh, more, more and more lawsuits come out regarding this, uh, issue. All right. More stuff, uh, regarding, um, for this last segment regarding your tech stuff. Um, I know that we don't really talk about cars that much on here, but there, I do have to talk about my, uh, my, one of my favorite car companies. That's Acura. Uh, I did drive an Acura MDX for a while. Fortunately, uh, it was, it was an older one, but it's still a great car. Um, could see myself doing that again, but, uh, the RDX now, is going to be coming out 2019 RDX is me redesigned. I didn't really like the body style of the first RDX that came out. It's kind of like I know they redesigned the MDX. That's what I drove for a little bit. Uh, they redesigned the MDX, kind of make it make it a little more beefier, a little more wider around the edges, which I liked. Uh, the RDX is kind of weird looking. Now they redesigned that body style, make it more of like that crossover that we are have been seeing a lot from these other car companies. This luxury crossover. Um, more of a sportiness kind of to it with um, these cleaner lines on the front as well. Um, it's going to be starting at a uh, cool $38,295, which is actually isn't terrible for an Acura. Uh, Acura is the luxury line, of course, of um, of Honda. So uh, you got to get in on that. If you'd like, the Acura is going to have all these. Oh, and this thing is now we're seeing all, all these companies come out with this. Uh, we're seeing tech is the, the best. I know the Nissan like to say, uh, now the, the newest technology you have is in your driveway. So, cause everything is all this. Um, we talked about self, actually we, we do talk about self-driving cars in the show, obviously, but, uh, we haven't really got into the actual car companies that are just trying to make your gas powered, regular human driving cars. Um, I know Nissan always says that we're going to keep you in the driver's seat. I know they still have the, the pro pilot assist, it's going to be helping you stay in your lane and probably has all the same things I see in the, the Hyundai is where you press, if you're in cruise control, you press a button and it'll slow down for you, keeping a certain, it'll keep your distance to the car in front of you that you want, whether it's car length or two car lengths or three car lengths. Um, but now we're seeing a lot of this from all this stuff. I know Acura, I've already driven in one that has this lane, lane keep assist also has the Acura watch, uh, as well. So it's going to be that, uh, emergency braking forward collision warning the cruise control, like I said, and the lane keep assists as well. So, which I, I mean, it's kind of interesting. Lane keep assist is kind of weird because you like ha, it, may, it requires you to turn your blinker on to un, basically lock your steering wheel in place. So where you stay straight on, and it'll keep it has sensors in the front, so where it, it'll pick up the lines in the road and keep you in the lines on the road basically. And then it'll lock your steering wheel. If you want to change lanes, you got to put that blinker on, and then it'll unlock it. So in order for you to switch over lanes there which is interesting. Uh, I know we're seeing a lot of stuff, um, 
with this uh, updates and technology. You know, Apple CarPlay is already thing. We're going to see an Android Auto as well uh, coming out as well. So um, whether <laughs> obviously Apple already was the first one to get uh, adapted into the cars where you just plug it in and you can have your phone screen up on the uh, display of the car. We're going to see that with Android as well with the Android Auto uh, coming out at a later date as well as the tech uh, one, the mid-range tech trim level starts at $41,495 for that Acura RDX. All right. And that adds a, uh, that does add the, um, Add up, add up suspension, heads up display, hands free tailgate, and uh, the surround view camera, um, as well as uh, heated steering wheel and rear seats uh, and ventilating front seats, which is interesting too. So that's also pretty cool. All right. Going in more, as we did talk about that um, Samsung Galaxy Note 9 with the uh, the increased RAM, that's going to be pretty interesting to see how they will be doing that. Um, more stuff on the GDPR, it's also going to be helping uh, you declutter your emails as well as uh, we're going to be different seeing a lot of all these different email services. Obviously, we saw Google make a real whole change to its uh, to its Google Gmail. I know Windows has re- redesigned the Outlook uh, service uh, as well, but it looks like that um, they're coming out. We're looking at these different. Uh, company privacy emails that you know the uh, privacy policy emails and how they stack up against these other companies i know um one of the highest scoring ones was ticketmaster and the fact that it um is changing its privacy policy and uh, making it more personal obviously when it comes to ticketing obviously you're spending a lot of money on these so many a lot of money on these event tickets and you want to make sure that you're data is protected that's kind of a way especially through tickets and things that you buy that's a good way to track people oh hey so and so just bought a ticket to this concert at this time uh why don't we sell their sell their information in order so they know we know they're not going to be home or we know they're going to be down there well we could we could package that together and make it a big whole thing whether they're interested in this person this band this they're going to be this venue we're going to sell them all this stuff we're going to put all this stuff in front of them now but it looks like Ticketmaster now will um has changed their stuff to um be more of his privacy is personal it's more of you and it's also going to be just like your taste in entertainment your privacy is personal to you that's their tagline as well so it's going to look like they're changing up their uh start as um they're going to be making the big di- make di- uh, big difference since their privacy pages as it's going to be clear and honest as well as a large action button uh, in their privacy policy in order to have it an open line for questions and uh, have it more transparent as these companies. I mean, obviously, you they don't want to have everything out there, but the if they're going to be nudged and nudged to be more a little, little more transparent, I think that we're going to have some good uh, reactions for it as well. All right. That's just one of the companies I wanted to talk about. More of the Apple AirPlay, too. This is what I do want to talk about that as well. So it looks like this uh, with the HomePod stereo, um, this AirPlay 2 will allow for what we saw from uh, the we're already seeing from these Amazon devices. Uh, Google Google Cast is also available, but you can play music from different speakers around the house. So you can do uh, different audio streaming and stereo uh, playing with your HomePod. So if you have multiple HomePods throughout the house, you can uh, play in different rooms and such and have it uh, sent to different rooms. I know I think one of my favorite commercials is is the uh, where the where the family has the Amazon Echoes dots in all the different rooms and uh they dinner is ready so they play a song it's like come and come get it uh or or whatever it is with the phone uh come get your dinner <laughs> it's ready come down to play a song to get everybody downstairs in order to uh, do that also uh I think there was one where the guy calls his wife on the Alexa with the Alexa uh, pod because he's locked in the garage or something. That one was pretty funny too. So it looks like the Apple will be getting in on that and bring in the, uh, the multi-room streaming uh, to your home pod and being able to uh, use that through AirPlay too in order to uh, try and well, not try, but to be able to allow you to uh, listen to different things throughout your houses. Obviously we have um, a variety of manufacturers doing the same thing as well, but Apple was, as always, even, I mean, we saw the car, I, I talked about this car, they kind of contradict a little bit. The car play, they get out, the, they get out first, they have the uh, technology, they get out in the cars first, but now with this, they're kind of taking a step back and letting everything happen ahead of them before they, uh, they jut out and announce their products. I know that Apple always uh, very, very careful about how they do their things. Obviously, we're going to see uh, how they start. Um, we'll be rolling this one out, and I think it'll be just fine. They're already seeing how popular it is with these other companies. It's like, okay, well, but people who are just solely Apple people 
we're gonna get the, we're gonna get them in on this too. Um, I know that the HomePod uh, is still getting closer and closer to working how we want it to work, just like uh, the these other ones we've seen as well. So um, whether it's gonna be connecting um, with each other or gonna you know, be able to use multiple HomePods with one phone, we know we can do that. Um, Siri also Siri also will be getting an update as well as uh, the product is definitely gonna be a little more like you know you gotta pay those Apple premiums. I think the you can get a, a HomePod from from Google for. Uh, one one twenty nine, and if you order it through, uh, there was some. I saw a commercial actually. If you order your HomePod through Comcast, I think, or if yeah, if you order it through one of your through Verizon or whatever, if you have a certain service, uh, you can go in and order one, and they'll give you a discounted price as well. So for those who have that, but the HomePod for Apple is going to be three hundred forty nine dollars, and yeah, so it's going to be a bit of a purchase as well. So. Uh, it's going to be only true Apple fans uh, will consider this one, I think, as um, they're still kind of working out and, and getting it closer and closer to what we really want and maybe maybe easier um, to be mass uh, mass sold to not only Apple f- Apple fanatics, but everyone who wants a home smart home device. All right. That'll wrap it up for the show today as we have gone through a bunch of different stuff regarding your iPhones, Apple, the uh, the general data production uh, regulation, and uh, the Amazon Alexa stuff regarding it. Listening to you, uh, de- definitely advise you to go look at your Amazon Alexa app and uh, tinker with that a little bit before you uh, use your Alexa again. All right, that'll we'll see you on Tuesday, Thursday, Thursday for another uh, another edition of the GSMC Technology Podcast. Until then, everybody enjoy their week. Talk to you then. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Technology Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network, from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program